Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. And cheers. Today is a very special vlog because we're going to move into the world of sour beers. Or, oh, kind of. So we're going to have a little bit of an experiment with the uh, Philly, the Wild Brew Philly Sour from Lalamand. So, although technically we're not making a sour beer in terms of adding bacteria or other kind of things than yeast to the beer, we'll be making a sour beer with a yeast that sours the beer, which is what this uh, Wild Brew Philly Sour actually does. So, we're going to have a play with a raspberry sour, first one I've ever done. We're all learning together. I've done raspberry wheats in the past, but they were just straight up wheat beers and the sourness came from the fruit rather than a yeast strain or anything else. So, pretty basic recipe I've got going on here. We've got a water profile which is going to be suitable for pale ales and bitters, which for me involves adding some calcium sulfate, a little bit of lactic acid, some calcium chloride and a little bit of sodium chloride. And then for the malts, we're going to keep the grain bill basic we're going to add 7 kilograms or 40% of extra pale malt. We're going to add 23% give or take of wheat malt. And then we're going to again add a little bit of lactic acid into that mash. The number might be off a little bit here at 10.4 mil. We're just going to dial it into 5.2 on the pH scale for the mash. Then we're going to mash in. We're going to continue that mash at 66 degrees C for an hour. And then we're going to knock out into the boil kettle, hopefully achieving a pre-boil gravity of uh, 1040. We'll see. And then after that, we're going to be boiling for an hour. We're going to add, I've skipped the page too soon, we're going to add a Wolflock tablet and five IBUs worth of just East Kent Goldings at 60 minutes. We're not looking for any hop contributions other than bitterness. Then we're going to cool the wort to around 25 degrees C. We're going to pitch, we're going to transfer and then pitch the Wild Brew Philly Sour from Lalamand at one gram per litre. But during the transfer, should I say, uh, we're also going to check the pH and we're going to sour in the kettle with a further addition of lactic acid to around 4.5 on the pH scale to make sure that we protect the beer from anything else getting a head start on the yeast we should be fine though and it also it'll help set that base sourness level a little bit lower and then after primary fermentation which is going to continue for five days at around 25 to 22 degrees C or four days it says on here we're going to add six liters of Vintner's raspberry puree which this particular uh, aseptic puree contains 10% glucose so the glucose should enhance the souring capability of the yeast and we're also going to be adding at the same time or actually we'll add this on pitch I believe maybe the same time as the fruit 3.3 uh, millilitres of fructzyme or a pectic enzyme to help break down any any uh, pectin that's in that fruit still and we'll continue to ferment secondary ferment on top of that fruit for another 10 days before finally testing the pH and the gravity and transferring into a keg where we'll crash it or we might do this in the fermenter crash it down to 4 degrees over the next 30 days or so the final pH that we're looking for is between 3.2 and 3.5 and the ABV of the beer, we're going to shoot, I think, for about 5.3, but it comes out at what it comes out with, because this is experimental. So there's the info. Let's get cracking with the brew.
There we are, boys and girls. We've got the fermenters set up and ready to go. And we're about to mash in. There we go. That's a better angle. We're about to mash in on the pilot kit for the first time in 2021, which is only a good thing, right? So I've got to remember how to do all of this jazz. Frankly, I can't. So we're going to underlet. So first things first, let's just take off the mash pump recirc pipe work and we'll just let that empty out there. That's not a problem. Right, I'm going to close off this recirculation valve for the HLT. We'll pull off the pipe work that supplies it and we will attach it to the bottom of the mash tun just like so. We're going to now turn the HLT off because I had that on uh, manual so it's a little bit hotter than we want it to be but that's not a problem. Now we're going to start the transfer out of the HLT into the mash tun and that's happening now. Get my trusty little mash paddle we'll get this in there so in here I've thrown in the water treatment that's gone in and the grain. So the grain bill consisting of around 80% pale malt, extra pale malt in fact, and about 20% wheat. So I'll just get rid of this lid so I don't end up dropping it on the floor. So we're just going to wait for the water to transfer now. I can feel that going. We started off with 80 litres and our recipe, wherever I've put it, it's around the corner. So our recipe is asking for a strike of 34 litres. So I'll just pop that on the side here. So 80 minus 34 is 46. So we'll let that run down. And when we get to the right level, we'll turn her off. I've also weighed out some lactic acid, which is over there. And what I'm going to do is periodically add that to the mash until we achieve a mash pH of 5.2. And then once we've hit that, 5.2 pH will start the countdown for 60 minutes and then when we transfer into the boil kettle we're going to boil and then we're also going to adjust the pH in the boil kettle as well after the boil I think probably because it will change anyway during the boil we want to hit about 4.5 there and then transfer it into the into the fermenting vessel with the yeast Right, I can smell this now and I can see the liquid coming up, so I'll just uh, set the camera to the back. There we go, so I, th I think you can see in there, good enough to see me doing a little bit of a masheroo. And then of course we're looking at the mash temperature on the control panel, and at the moment it's reading around six, uh, 46 degrees course we want to get this mashed in a little bit more before we can determine our temperature. It smells wonderful of course as always. That's it we're looking at about 63 now, 64. It's getting closer. Oh, if only you could smell it. I would like to say I hit it on the head, but I've overshot the pH a little bit. 4.8, 4.78 there. Uh, I don't think it's the end of the world because we're going in that direction anyway, but I was a little bit hasty in terms of adjusting it. I didn't give it enough time for it to percolate through the entirety of the mash. But what we do have, conveniently, is the auto mash recirc seems to be doing its job perfectly. It's maintaining 
65.5, put the thermometer in there, we're closer to 66. Obviously, the thermal well's at the front here and it's coming into the top. But I'm really pleased with how this is operating. The mash tun's holding temp, just needs to climb a couple of degrees to get back up to 78 for the sparge. But of course, the mash tun's pinching a little bit at the same time. Fingers crossed, one mistake averted. 0.5 low on the mash pH, 0.4. I think we can live with it, I really do. I think we can live with it. So I've taken the liberty of conducting an iodine test to of course ensure that although we missed our mash pH target, we have indeed got full conversion and that, look at the yellowness of that, that for, for sure is completely converted. So that aside, we are now at the transfer stage. So we're slowly, slowly sparging into the mash and we're slowly, slowly filling up the kettle. Look at the colour of that. And it's clear and it's beautiful and it looks fantastic. And then also, I've got the tripod in my hand now, so it's going to be a bit, a bit of a wobbly walk. We managed to put some 25 degree caustic in the tank and clean the firmzilla out and then I've given it a rinse and then now it's got some Persid 15 sat in the bottom and shaking him about a little bit and in order to do that I've been using the line cleaning loop so we just drop this into a bucket of whatever you want to be pumping and then connect that of course to your tank so it's been through caustic pumped through the lines and through all of the quick disconnects and then some rinse water and then what's left in this bucket here is what's left over of the acid and the rest of it is of course in there we've also turned the chiller on down below so this is going to be getting down to probably about five degrees i don't think it needs to be much colder than that and then we'll drop the cooling coils We'll connect the cooling coils and drop the thermo well into the top of the tank. And he's there already, look, the thermo well. Bendy little piece of steel, so we just have to drop a probe in there. And we'll be ready to start the fermentation. But first, we've got a boil to take care of. We're almost at full volume about to start the boil. Mash tun almost empty, 78 degrees C and pH reading of the finished work is 5.03 so we weren't too bad after all it must have had some buffing capacity to bring it back in so we're only 0.2 off realistically so I'm gonna go and sour this by another half a pH to get it down to 4.5 and uh, just quickly something I want to address while I was talking earlier on about the um, the mash recipe, uh, the recipe, the quantity of grey going into the mash, 40% extra pale, 22% wheat. Now I know that only adds up to 62%. That is because the raspberry puree, 6 litres of raspberry puree, is 10.83 on the gravity scale and six liters of that being added and into secondary provides the remaining 37.1% um, of that uh, fermentable content. So we're approaching the boil. There was just time enough to wash me hose and uh, I, 98 degrees, we're looking good. So we're bang on in terms of volume and gravity. Of course, now that we've approached a boil, it's saying I've got 65 litres. When I turned the mash tun off, we had about 63, 64. The gravity is at 1040 stroke 1041 with the refractometer 
a little bit more tricky to gauge with that because it's not as precise, but close enough. And the pH, I've added two lots of five millilitres of lactic acid and the first edition took me to 4.83 and the second edition I'm about to go and check now. So the second edition has taken us to 4.66 so I'll probably just add another two and a half mil of lactic see where that brings us I call that boil so we've just got six IBUs of Goldings going in here just to give a, a note of bitterness very little addition realistically but this beer is all about the fruit and the sourness it's not about the bitterness so we've got a beautiful boil going on and while we wait for that to complete, I'm going to pull out the grain and we're going to take this home for the chickens. Oh, they're going to be my biggest fan. So you'll get to see them munching on this at the close of the video. But we seem to have got a good extraction. This, uh, this grain is nicely uh, friable, there doesn't seem to be much sugar left behind in it at all. We have the start of a transfer. Looking good so far. So we're pulling this across it and I'm going to dial it into 25 degrees. So let's see if we can get everything in shot. So you can kind of see what's happening. Tuck that in there a little bit. Right, so I've managed to get a hose into the top, so it's a sanitary transfer. The only thing I've taken out is the quick disconnect cap. Uh, 19.4, so I'll just up the speed a little bit. Put the lid on that. Everything looking cushy. 19.5. Speed up a little bit more, 19.7. I mean, we don't have the hot water coming out very fast at all, but I did pre chill it, so the kettle itself is only at 55 degrees. I'll just use that to clap this onto here. So there we go, 20.3. I'll just keep my eye on that. But we're transferring nice and steady. Let's see if we can turn that up full speed. That is full speed. So it's going through the plate cella relatively slowly. But that's not really a problem. It's only a problem if it stops. So, a little bit hazy. I haven't given this a hop stand or anything like that, it's just coming straight off the boil. So I expect to see some trub in there at some point. I can't see it being a problem because I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a transfer at some point before I put the fruit in. Or maybe I'll put the fruit in and then transfer the following week. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. 
It's so smooth running. It's looking very exciting. So we're already up to 28 litres. It's transferring it around 4 litres per minute, I think, which is pretty good. And we're going into the MV at the moment at 23.8, but we are bouncing between 25, 26, and 22. So I'm just controlling the cold water flow. The work is at maximum. So I'm controlling the cold water to balance that temperature. We don't want to go into these FVs over, I believe, 30 degrees. Well, I think that's what we've got. Uh, something like that. I can't see it. 35 degrees C is the max. Oh no, liquids are 55. Max ambient, 35. So we're well within those thresholds. And the work itself as well now is coming out a lot clearer than it was originally when it started. So our temp climbing a little bit, 24.7. And ultimately you can see how clear that work's looking in the kettle. Hello mate. Right, as I was saying, I've just got interrupted by the courier collecting some beer mail. Look how clear we are. You can really see that it started to clear up where it can. A little bit of trouble at the bottom, I've just moved it, but it's, uh, it's looking very good indeed. So I think we're going to actually pull out quite a large quantity of work today. Looking at this, because I know this is just an indicator, but we're already at 45 litres and climbing. And I think there's more than five litres left in there. We'll see, we'll see. It's looking good though. So there she is. The all-rounder is full. I've just taken a gravity reading and we've come out high. So we was looking for 10471 and we've come out at 10.505, so we're up around three gravity points there, and also 50 litres. Well, I know it's only a guide on the Kegland all-rounder, but it says 53 litres there, so we'll say 53. Uh, I didn't want to go too much over 50 litre mark, because obviously when I add the fruit, that's another six litres we've got to squeeze into there, but also, the dilution ratio of fruit to beer would be different uh, so when I'm scaling this recipe up it would change so I didn't want to confuse it too much in that respect so all that's left to do now is weigh out 50 grams or 53 grams of the raspberry of the Philly wild brew sour yeast and then pop the top and the cooling and everything else onto the um, Firmzilla all-rounder and that's the first batch on the pilot kit in 2021. Frigging completed. There we have it, folks. It's in. It's fermenting. One problem, though, the pump on the cooler doesn't have enough power to push the glycol around the loop. So I've ordered a couple of pumps off Amazon. They'll be here tomorrow. We'll swap them out. This yeast probably has a 24 hour lag phase anyway. I can't see it free rising too much in that time. It's sat at 23 degrees now. I'm sure it will be fine. I'll put a jacket on it before I leave. Everything else is set to come on tomorrow morning. HLT will ping on first thing. We'll start mashing in tomorrow's brew. Mango sorbet IPA style. Will it work? I don't know. You're gonna have to tune in to find out. And until then, We'll see you on the next one. Friggin' rights, boys.